think it's pronounced Sinai House, but it's spelled Sinai House in Burton on Trent. Burton upon Trent, I should say, has seen ghosts of monks, dogs, soldiers, and even a phantom coach. The spirit of Henry William Paget, who once all owned the property, has also been seen. The Grade Two listed building dates back from the 13th century when it was occupied by the Schobenol uh, family before being donated to Burton Abbey. The house is split into two, one derelict shell and the other stands in its original form. A pack of black dogs has, been report, has reportedly been seen prowling the grounds and an 18th century man lurking in corners of the dining room during a tour of the house, investigators reported seeing a young monk carrying a tray through the wall, supposedly an old, to an older, ill monk. Uh, monks used to live in the property when recovering from bloodletting procedures. Sini comes from the word Sinai, translated to bloodhouse. Sir Henry Paget, who was Wellington's second in command at the Battle of Waterloo, is said to still roam, roam the grounds as well as a grey lady seen on the bridge over the moat looking for her lost love. Apparently during ghost walks people have been pulled and thrown across the room. Electrical uh, items have gone wrong for no reason and people have also heard the whispering of dead. On July the 19th 2011 a driver reported seeing a white bass figure pass over the middle of Burton Bridge. The light from his head white lights appeared to go through the figure and once it reached the far side of the bridge the figure vanished. Also the haunting sounds of people crying and a massive explosion in Burton. A mysterious old war plane that deafened residents but could not be seen or amongst the incidents reported as a group of Roman soldiers uh, crossing the road. Reported in the 1990s the former Burton Mail Office Situated in High Street, Burton, is said to be haunted by the ghost of a printer and by the sound of mysterious feet running down the staircase. It's also believed that ghosts of a maid and young boy walk the corridors. Reporters were never keen to stay late on their own or use the women's toilets on the top floor. Many reporting unnerving sensations at one end of the toilets. Phantom bell ringers appeared in April 2012 at King Edward's Place, heading towards the corner of Rangemore Street in Burton. Two bell ringers with first-hand experience of every bell in the town heard an unfamiliar ringing come from the direction of Aldi Supermarket, the sound being different to the nearby Town Hall clock and that of St Modern's Church, with bells that could occasionally be heard in the area. The supermarket was built on the site of the Holy Trinity Church, which had a heavy bell that would be, had a similar note depth to the sound the bell ringers heard. Again in April 2012, between 9.15am and 9.30, outside St Chad's Church in Hunter Street, Burton, Two bell ringers standing outside the church waiting to ring for Sunday services heard the pealing of a set of eight bells. The next nearest church had only six bells, whilst only two churches with eight bells both denied their bells were operating at the time. In the summer of 2006, a woman in Burton Chemist screamed the shop down after seeing a man in grey rags with dirty long hair who held his arms out and made guttural sounds which she did not understand. The figure vanished and a witness was given a chair and a glass of water by staff who waited for her to calm down. Around July 2004, two young boys slipped into a derelict site along Shobnall Road, which is now a housing estate, after a firm had closed down and moved away. The first time they did so, they heard footsteps and the feeling of being watched. In another building they heard machinery and hammering, although nothing could be seen. A few days later they entered the site again, but this time watched a large man slept through a, a gap in the fence. 
and shout at them they fled the site. When they returned later they found the gap in the fence to be far too narrow for the man to have fitted through. Uh, the Micropub, the last heretic, was named after Edward Reitman, the last Christian martyr to be burned alive in Lichfield. He died on April the 11th in 1612. Mr Reitman was from Burton and his ghost is reported to still reside in the town. Uh, there re have been reportedly been frightenings going on in Burton's former Appleby uh, pub in Green Street. In the crossings, formerly known as the Blue Post, on Burton High Street, there are reports of a strange youth in 1970s style clothing uh, being chased by a Jamaican WPC, that's lady police officer for my American viewers. Um, should you dare to confront him, do remind him of the date and that he has a lovely family back in Indonesia. railway station a level crossing at Rolleston. The phantom of a man killed at the junction is said to walk along the platform looking for his lorry which was destroyed in a collision. A guard at Bretby Business Park who approached a young woman in, in a summer dress though it was winter who said she was lost and wanted directions to Stapen Hill which the guard gave. CCTV showed the guard speaking and gesturing but there was no woman detected on the camera. Spirits have been said to be seen drifting through the woodland around Moira Furnace, and in the buildings themselves there are many reports of paranormal activity at the Furnace and the surrounding area over the years, including the story of a drunk man who has lost his footing one night and fell into the canal and drowned. Uh, disembodied voices are also heard throughout the building, the feeling of uneasiness and nausea has been felt when guests have entered into certain areas of the building. Uh, Greasley Old Hall in South Derbyshire, which is said to have a plethora of ghostly inhabitants haunting the corridor, the 16th century Grade II listed building is said to have been built in 1556 for Sir Christopher Allen out of the materials of the demolished Greasley Priory which date back to the 1100s. Tales of grease, grisly deaths surround the hall, including two children who were abused and abandoned by a man who was stabbed to death on the first floor landing. It's said that the bloodstains are still visible today, despite several attempts to cover them up. Legend has it that a derelict room on second floor houses, uh, there are lost souls of children who died in a house fire after the maid fell asleep beside the fire. An axe, after the accident, the room was boarded up and never used again. It's said that the ghost of a maid, who does not like the story being told, tries to scare people by making them move or switch out, uh, switch out of as her story is told. People who lived in the, alleged, uh, in the hall allegedly refused to go upstairs for fear of being terrorised by the ghost of the maid. She is 65 and called Maggery and worked as a maid in the Victorian era. A Newton Park Hotel, Newton Sloney in South Derbyshire, dates back to the 18th century and was once home to the brewing giants, the Ratcliffe family. A group of paranormal investigators said they'd seen evidence of a white lady of the venue. Sarah Goldsmith, who led the group, said people had deliberately avoided the small ensuite bathroom in one of the bedrooms as they reported feeling like someone was standing behind them. Sutbury Castle dates from about 1071, possibly even earlier. It was built by the Normans and played a significant role in English history. One of the things that the castle is well known for, it was here, it was where Mary Queen of Scots was held captive, not once, but on four separate occasions. It was also where the plot that led to her eventual death was conceived. Several ghosts are said to haunt Tutbury Castle, making it one of the most haunted places in Staffordshire. As you might expect, Mary Queen of Scots is said to be amongst them. She must have hated Tutbury Castle, since it served as a prison so often, but she appeared to a group of 40 men in 2004 
standing atop the South Tower. This was not the first time she'd been seen in the castle. In the 1980s, a serving marine reported seeing her walking across the grass. She has been seen by archaeologists participating in a dig at the castle and by a senior member of the castle staff who previously denied all paranormal activity. The credibility of witnesses that have seen her gives weight to the claim the Mary Queen of Scots is indeed haunting Tutbury Castle. Uh, the castle also plays host to various other ghosts, including a mysterious man in a full set of armour, the white lady in the North Tower, a little boy in a white shirt, and a little girl named Ellie, who try to, to pull rings from visitors' fingers. living in Tutbury claim their village is the most haunted in Staffordshire. They claim to have seen ghoul soldiers marching through the village, a frightening black dog ghost and a well-dressed gentleman who scares the life out of them. One of the tales comes from Laura Bagnall, 25, who says she saw the grey lady while working at the Dog and Partridge pub and hotel in the high street. There was a grey lady there, I know it's cringy, but that's what they called her. I used to have to open up my own, on my own and a dark shadow would walk past you into a room and not be there when you went in. All the rooms were really haunted. There should have been TVs, but they weren't on and they would suddenly just burst into static. You always had stuff getting moved. It always felt like someone was watching you. There was always eyes on you, even when you were on your own. You also got the sound of children laughing in the meeting room. That was quite common and a friend said she'd seen a young boy in Victorian clothing. She says that the hotel itself was haunted, but added that the spirits in the building were in fact playful and friendly. And it was the old coal store around the back of the pub which had been converted into a flat where she used to live. The Lauren said harboured the scarier ghouls. She said a she said a butcher once died there of a heart attack. Whoever was in the hotel hotel was quite playful, but in the flat it was malicious, she said. I used to hate it, I hate staying there on my own. She said there were no windows in the bedroom. She often slept in the living room with all the lights on. I'd be watching TV and the plug would just come straight out of the wall, she said. So I'd plug it back in, but it would happen again, and it got to the point where i cry out loud, Can you stop it? You're scaring me! Then one night, back from work, and the kettle, kettle was sat in the bathroom, unplugged with a stand and everything. She also said that when she stayed at the house of her friend, 24-year-old George Williamson in Bridge Street, which he told her was haunted, Lauren said upstairs there was an old bathroom, We'd never used that bathroom. They hated it. Even the dog wouldn't walk under the hatch. Just really e eerie. Didn't feel nasty, but you were never alone. You never got any privacy. One night I could hear music and his record player was just going round and round on its own. Then later that same, same night, he was at work and I was in the bedroom and I heard an almighty crash and the loft hatch had just hit the deck. In the early 2000s, the Acorn in Litchfield was supposedly home to a presence nicknamed Fred. <coughs> On the M6 toll near the city, Sue, Sue Cowley was driving her husband and child home in December 2005, but stopped when she saw what she first thought were animals crossing the road. As Sue stopped, she realised these were shadowy figures, dressed in Roman clothing. A group of 20 or more men were reportedly waist-deep in the tarmac, as if it were water, though it did not impede their movement. Worth Castle is thought to date back to the 1180s and depicts a typical Norman moat and bailey layout. Since the <coughs> castle's completion, the subsequent owners have made many alterations and additions to its outer buildings. The castle was deserted throughout much of the 18th century until 1783 and 1811 when significant additions were made. 
Nevertheless, 11 families lived in the castle until 1879, when the town council purchased the castle for £3,000. The ghosts have a reputation for some of the nastiest ghosts in the United Kingdom. Ghostly figures are regularly seen floating through the corridors and peering out of the windows at visitors. Doors are heard opening and slamming all hours of the day and lights flicker on and off in rooms devoid of light. One malevolent entity has been known to physically attack people and has the ability to cause short-term blindness. It's best to steer clear of that evil ghost. The most prominent ghosts that haunt Tamworth Coast Castle are both the Lady in Black and the White Lady. Their apparitions have been seen throughout the castle. The Lady in Black is a ghost of a nun, Aditha, who was woken from her grave one night in 1139 by nuns at the, the local convent. Aditha attacked Robert de Marmion and prophesied that he would die a gruesome, untimely death unless he reinstated the nuns at their convent. A spirit stuck, struck Robert with the point of a crozier, and terrified screams were heard around the castle. The pain subsided once he permitted the nuns to return to their convent. Editha still haunts the castle to this day. People have seen figures in their peripheral village vision. Alarms have sounded for no reason, and lights and doors have a mind of their own. One worker reportedly had a sharp pain in the face as the apparition walked towards him in the second floor gallery. Then he said he said to have gone momentary blind. At Tamworth's Middleton Hall, sightings of a grey lady go back to the 1800s when the phantom was spotted sitting in a chair in the library. More recently, she was spotted by a volunteer on the site, although remained unseen by two other people that the volunteer walked alongside. Uh, the Palace Theatre, now McDonald's in Tamworth, a local story is that Reverend Willem McGregor brought two Egyptian mummies back to the town. When they started to rot, the Reverend then entombed in the foundations of the cinema, which, had, which was then being reconstructed. The site where Alton Towers Mansion stands has a history that can be traced back to 1000 BC when there was an Iron Age fort on the site. The site was handed to King Colred of Mercia in 700 AD but he, has, he had gone insane within seven years leading many to say that the land itself was cursed. This belief was strengthened in the 19th century with a legend of the old oak tree the Alton Towers mansion was transformed in the 1800s by Charles Talbot, 15th Earl of Shrewsbury. In 1821, Charles was heading home to the mansion at night when his cane coach came upon an old beggar woman. He refused her help and pointed to a nearby oak tree and told him that one of the Talbot family would die for every branch that fell. That same night, during a storm, one of the family members died due to a sudden illness. The following morning he checked the tree and found a branch had broken off. He attempted to ward off the curse by chaining up the tree. The chains are still visible today. Uh, but it's believed that the oak tree possesses the ability to weep and groan in an eerily human manner, especially when felled. In terms of ghosts, the most haunted area of Alton Towers is the appropriately named hex Road. It's rumoured in the old armoury of the mansion and those queuing have often reported seeing children dressed in Victorian clothing and had st stones and other objects thrown at them. In the main house a large man has been spotted mm -hmm. but there have been phantom footsteps of feeling of great anger in the area. The most common sighting is of a woman in a long dress who strolls the mansion's corridors accompanied by a strong smell of perfume. It's been suggested that there should have been a governess at the mansion. Not too long ago, a guard quit his job after encountering something strange and mysterious in the Rose Garden.
Mill Street, Rochester is reputedly to be haunted by a nun hanged in a nearby field in the 1100s when Rochester Abbey was operational. The ghostly nun is sometimes seen as a scarecrow looking figure and some claim to have developed goosebumps when driving through the area, too afraid to look at their real view mirrors as they feel something is just behind them. At 5.30am in 2004 on the, Chartley in, on the road to Chartley in Toxter, a figure dressed in black walked by two men out early one morning. The men turned to have another look, but the figure had disappeared. RAF Tattenhill Base between 2010 and 2000, sorry, 2008 and 2010, a witness worked on the site, smelt an old aftershave in the corner of the warehouse, which is only detectable at 8:30 p.m. It's also reported that young men could be heard in disused buildings, even though none of them, uh, no one was in them at the time. The Royal Oak in Abbas Bromley, I understand is now closed and not to be confused with the Royal Oak in Kings Bromley. A bearded gentleman has been seen lurking around in the attic and one of the bedrooms. A few unearthly notes from a non-existing music box have been heard in the bar area. Thank you.